Have you ever wanted to buy your own power meter, but they're too expensive? Or maybe you've got one, but it's only one-sided and you really want a dual-sided power meter. Or perhaps you've wondered, is my left leg as strong as my right, or vice versa? Hopefully in this video we can answer some questions for you about power meters, and maybe we can even prompt you, if you haven't already got one, into buying one for yourself. I'm not at the cafe yet, no we're yeah, talking about bananas. cakes. <laughs> Custard crepes, something nice and warm because it's cold weather. Yeah. Misty morning. So this is a spider-based power meter, as all good power meters are, and Magin sell four different sorts, and you buy them according to the crankset or chainring configuration you've got. And if you're like me, most of you are going to be running Shimano crankset and chainrings, so you'll need this model here, the 505, because there's four bolt holes. If you've got an older crankset, don't despair, Magin also sell a different power meter which fits older type chainrings as well, different BCD, bolt circle diameter. Now before we open the box, this power meter does power, cadence, left and right balance, and pedal smoothness. So the full name for this product is the Magine P505 Base Power Meter. Its power accuracy is plus or minus 1.5%. It measures 0 to 2500 watts, measuring cadence 20 to 200 RPM, has a 200 hour battery life, and transmits both Ant and Bluetooth. As stated before, it's a double-sided power meter, it's temperature compensating, and it has a two-year warranty, and the whole package with the crank set is $599 Australian dollars. The axle is exactly the same as your Shimano 24mm, so it fits perfectly into your bottom bracket, and we'll explain how to do that in a minute. In this kit you'll also get chain ring bolts, the tool to do up the lock ring to hold the power meter onto the PES crank set, and a set of laser etched stickers. So here's your power meter and here's your Shimano crank set, whether it's Durace, Ultegra or Shimano 105, and you want to put it onto your crank set. But you can't, because your bottom bracket axle is affixed into the factory permanently into the spider, and the spider is affixed permanently onto the crank arm. So you can't put a power meter on a Shimano crank set, unless of course you want to buy a complete Shimano power meter crank set, which of course is expensive. So if you can't fit the power meter spider onto your Shimano crank set, you can get a crank set that does fit the spider. Hence the PES crank set. Instructions do come in the box how to put the power meter onto the PES crank set. Magin also sell chain rings for their crank set. They are the same sizing as Shimano, 110 BCD. And they come in sets, compact, mid-compact and standard. But if you're like me, you want to use the chain rings from your Shimano crank set, I'll show you how. Okay, let's show you how to put this power meter and crank set on your bike. So if you've worn one or both of your Shimano chain rings out, here's your chance to save a bit of money and try out the Magin chain rings. And using the Magin chain rings, this is what the crank set looks like. Pretty good. Comparing the weights, Shimano right hand Ultegra crank set to the Magin right hand crank. The Magin's 98 grams heavier, but don't forget you get the bonus power meter, but of course the Ultegra crank set has no power meter. Left hand cranks, the Magin is 4 grams heavier than the Ultegra. So in total, you're paying 102 grams for a power meter. So from your bike, remove your pedals, 
Removing and installing a crankset you can do with your chain on, but it's easier with the chain removed. Release the tension on the left hand crank pinch bolts. Remove the bearing preload nut. Push up the safety plate and the crank arm pulls off. Tap the bottom bracket axle with a soft mallet and the right hand crank with its bottom bracket axle should slide straight out. Now is a good opportunity to clean the bottom bracket area because it's normally hard to clean with the crank set on. Using a T30 undo and remove the chain ring bolts. Inner chainring should easily just pull straight up and off. And if the large chainring doesn't push off, use a small rubber mallet for a bit of persuasion. Another opportunity to clean at a hard to get to place. If you're waxing your chain, you probably don't even need to clean your chain rings. Locate the anti-jam pin, it's on the large chain ring. Flip the chain ring over with the pin toward you. Also flip the power meter over so the writing is facing you and that you can read it in the correct direction. Mount it on the chain ring pins and then mount the small chain ring on the back of the power meter on the chain ring pins. Make sure that the writing on the small chain ring is also facing you. Screw in all four chain ring bolts. Now on your right hand crank remove the lock ring. Note the flat section of the splines and line it up with the flat cavity on the crank arm. The anti-jam pin should now be under the crank arm. Now put the lock ring on and tighten it up to 35 to 40 newton meters. This adapter comes with the power meter so you can use it with a Holotech 2 tool. All done, ready to mount on your bike. Grease your bottom bracket axle. You don't need to grease the whole axle, only where the bearings sit on the axle. Push the bottom bracket axle through and put a nice even coating of grease on the left hand spline. Put an even coating of grease on the left hand crank splines and slip the crank on the bottom bracket axle. Insert and do up the preload bolt so that the crank spins freely. That's too tight, we'll back it off a bit. That's better. The instructions say that this single pinch bolt needs to be tightened to 12 to 14 Newton meters. Make sure your crank spins freely and that there's no play. Now it's time to mount your pedals, so put a bit of grease on the pedal threads. Mount the pedals and tighten them up appropriately. Check that the front derailleur shifts the chain by the correct amount. It should work perfectly as Magin have made this power meter spider directly compatible with Shimano. All done, now we just need to charge it up, connect it to a head unit and get it all going. The power plug is magnetic and sticks in alignment on the power meter. When the red LED turns green, the power meter is fully charged. Now to test out this power meter, we're going to be using an IGP Sports 630, a Wahoo Element Bolt and a Garmin 530. So here we are, real world testing out with the bunch. The first thing you'll realise with the power meters, all of them, is that your numbers will fluctuate by 20, 30 or 40, even though you might feel as though you're pedalling at a steady rate. Second thing you might notice is when you're putting in very low power, like here, we're on a slightly downhill slope, the numbers may not be accurate, but that doesn't matter as you won't be working with such low power numbers anyhow. Here we're using the Wahoo head unit on an uphill 8% gradient and you can see the power numbers are higher and more consistent. These are the sort of numbers you'll usually be familiarising yourself with in about the 200s and upwards.
Power meters are a great training tool for climbing hills. Using the Garmin unit, the figures are of course the same. And just as a side note, personally I found the Wahoo easier to read as you can set big sized font for the screen. When you start getting into the higher power numbers, you'll usually be out of the saddle climbing or sprinting. So don't worry if you can't see your power numbers, the screen at the time, you can always check them when you get home. All your power data is recorded. First of all, looking at things from a mechanical perspective, you can tell that it's a crank based power meter. It looks like what they all look like. Here's the Ultegra one I took off. Now, because of the hole in the middle, it may not look as sleek or as aero as this one, but it looks more aggressive, I reckon, than the Shimano crank set, and you can tell it's definitely a power meter. Looks like it means business. Secondly, I was concerned maybe these PS cranks are not as strong as the Shimano crank sets, but I was proved completely wrong. Put the power down, look down as a reference to your cage on the front derailleur, see if there's any flex. Nah, it's exactly the same as the Shimano ones, no problem whatsoever. So thumbs up for the strength of these PS cranks compared to your Shimano, no problem. On the left hand crank, of course on Shimano you've got a double bolt clamp. On the PS crank set here there's only one bolt clamp, but I've had no problems whatsoever so far. Done about oh, 15 rides now with this power meter on the bike, and it's winter here so every second ride is wet, and even if it's not raining the roads are still wet anyway, so you're going to get wet, especially around the bottom bracket area. Now, I can tell you now, it's working fine, waterproof, dustproof, mudproof, and of course, after every ride, especially me, in winter, I'll clean the bike, sudsy wudsy and wash it off, and it still works fine, so it's obviously waterproof and dustproof and mudproof. Comparing spider-based power meter to pedal-based, at least at the end of winter or wet months, you don't have to go pulling your pedals apart to service them if water gets past the seals into the bearings. It may not get into the power meter part of the pedal, but it'll certainly get into your bearings, so you don't have to worry about that. And because you're using your pedals that you always use, you don't have to worry about cleat adjustment, changing shoes and all that sort of stuff. And also in some power meter pedals, the Q factor, difference between your left and your right leg or foot, is slightly wider. So you don't have to worry about that at all because you're using your same pedals. No need to worry about all that stuff. Charging this power meter is super easy. The plug has a little magnet on it, so you just put it near it and it sucks onto the little connection there and it charges up in less than three hours. And then it lasts 200 hours, so long time between charging. Another thing too, you don't need to add extra sensors for cadence or distance or speed and all that sort of thing. The power meter does it all and it's got it all in there and it works from GPS as well. So all this sort of kerfuffle, you don't have to worry about that. Although one thing you do need to have, I'd recommend is a heart rate monitor. Get yourself a heart rate monitor and that's a valuable asset to go along with your power meter. To calibrate or zero the power meter before every ride you go on, which is recommended, you just pedal backwards five times and it zeroes itself. One thing I really wanted to try out, and I'm sure you will, because it's a double-sided power meter, you can find out which leg is weaker than the other. And I found out from consistently riding, my left leg was weaker than my right. Figures were about 49, 52, 48, 51, something like that. So consistently, left leg is weaker than the right. So you'll probably find one of your legs is weaker than the other. What we do about that, well, that's a different topic altogether. Using a power meter and its figures is very much like using a heart rate monitor. You compare your performance to your performance, not so much comparing yourself to others. So what's more important is not so much the accuracy of the device, although that is important, but the stability and the consistency of the device is more important. When you first start using a power meter, the first 10 or so rides, you'll start to get to know your personal figures or your zones. And using that along with the heart rate monitor, if you can, then you'll be able to hone in and certainly see if your performance is getting better or going down. So you can use your power and your heart rate figures and also compare that to how you're feeling. So you'll get to know yourself even more so using a power meter. And personally, I like to use that so that I ride just below my uncomfortable feeling, my uncomfortable figures, and that way I feel a bit more fresher so that when the time comes to bridge a gap or take my turn on the front of the bunch, then I'll have a little bit more energy to do so. 
another way of using your power figures you'll find in the first 10 or so rides is using the power certain power figures per certain activity so for instance if you're hill climbing you might like to stick to around 220 uh, watts and anything above that starts to get too hard and anything below it is you feel fresh so you get to know yourself that way another way is if you're perhaps just doing an effort for a couple of minutes say on the front of the bunch and you know you can keep a higher power way above that of when you're hill climbing so you might aim for around 260 and you can keep that for a couple of minutes while you're on the front of the bunch whereas if you go back to your 220 you're not putting in enough effort anyway so as well as how you feel you can look at the power numbers to help you out another handy way of using the power figures is to keep control of yourself for instance, if you're hill climbing and you go too hard with the power, you'll puff out pretty <laughs> quickly. Whereas if you keep on your power level that you know you can climb consistently or just below it, then you'll climb up that hill in better time. So using it as a control mechanism for yourself is also good. Yet another way is to use it as motivation. You know your power numbers, this might take maybe more than 10 rides to get to know your exact zones, is if you're on a certain situation, say you're doing the same hill and you've done it three or four times with your power meter. So what you can do is, if, for instance, if you do around about say 230 watts and that's about it, you can push it to maybe 235, just push yourself ever so much a little bit more and see if you can do, do that 235 watts consistently all the way up. So you can use that as a motivation tool, you know the figures where you are and you can maybe push yourself a bit more. Now with your power meter the results on the screen are instantaneous so you put a bit more power in and instantly you'll see the result on the screen in the figures. With a heart rate of course the, the sensor itself is, is no problem, it's your heart that needs to catch up. Your heart always is a little bit slower to react to the exertion that you make. So it doesn't mean that the heart rate is no good, especially as you get older, you'll rely more and more on your heart rate as you go. So don't throw your heart rate monitor out, keep it and use it. In fact, I would go as far as to say, um, if you're just using a power meter without a heart rate, that's all well and good, but definitely get yourself a heart rate monitor to go, to go along with the power meter. But it also depends on a few other factors as well, like hydration, maybe you've had caffeine, maybe you're not feeling good at the time, maybe you're coming on with a cold or something so your heart rate will be up or you're overcoming a cold. So there's lots of different factors as well that affect your heart rate rather than just your power, which is purely what you're putting out of your legs. Now this may sound a bit juvenile, but when you're riding with other riders, particularly in a bigger bunch, don't keep looking at your head, your head unit, at your figures. Keep in mind safety first. If you're looking at your head unit, you're not watching where you're going. If you cross wheels, you cause an accident. So if anything, every now and again, it's good to take your head unit off, leave it at home and go for a ride without your power, without any figures whatsoever. But nevertheless, once you've got control of it and you know how to use it, um, then you'll be right. Now we could go on all day about how to use the power meter, how to use the figures and all that sort of thing. There's other tutorials and videos about that. But mainly this video is to have a look at this machine power meter, see how easy it is to use, see how consistent it is. Um, it's not lacking anything and it's one of the cheapest on the market and, and, and I find it great. It's really, really good. So would I recommend it? Absolutely. Good on your machine. It's a nice little unit. Cocaine. Classic cocaine. Dude, he's got everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're at Mount Bowl Dam today. Caravan. Are we going to go across or not? Yeah, like Steve said, the other one could be worse. Oh, Too deep. A couple of minutes into the ride, and guess what? <laughs> Rustle again. <laughs> Puncture already. Gee, yeah. Got drugs? Yeah. What are the condoms for, Russ? <laughs> Later. Yeah. Just come down a steep hill. Special five bucks. So what's he making his aim for? Let's go back up. <laughs> and uh, you can smell something burning. One of our riders' rim brake brake pads are burning away. Yeah. <laughs> Yum yum. That's okay. It's 